Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second night of our Youth Week of Prayer. Our theme this week is Why Me? Yesterday was our first day, and I know you guys enjoyed it, so hopefully today will be the same. Make sure that you share the link with friends and family so that they can help support us. And before we be begin, let us pray. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us safe traveling mercies today. I ask that we will be able to learn something today from your word. And I ask that you will help us to continue to follow into your footsteps and that we will always do your will. Guide us, protect us, keep us away from evil. Forgive us our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, it is now time for our praise and worship songs. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Our next praise and worship song will be Faithful is Our God. If God's been faithful, then sing along with us. Everybody say faithful. 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 Faithful, faithful, is, faithful our is our God. Come on all over the world. Faithful. Say faithful. Faithful, 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 is, faithful our is our God. Come on, say faithful. 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 Faithful, 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 is, our faithful God. is our God. Yes, he is. Come on, say faithful. 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 Faithful, faithful, is faithful is our God. I'm reaping the harvest. Reaping the harvest Take back what the devil Take stole from me. Stole and from I rejoice me. today. I shall recover it all. Yes, I rejoice today.
Amen, amen, amen. Faithful is our God. At this time, we will play our Kahoot game, and I ask that if you guys could please join for some participation. That would be great, and competition, too. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is now time for our game of Kahoot. Let me go ahead and get that up so you guys can see. One moment. All right, so we have our game pin here. It's right here. You can put that the pin number in, or you can scan the QR code to start. All right, we have Tanya here. Anyone else? All right, Ashley. Norris, Georgiana. All right, any more participants? Come on, guys! It's time. It's, the time is now to come on and join. You can use your camera to scan the QR code, or you can go on www.kahoot.it and put the game pin in. It should be pretty fun. We can get a couple more. All right. All right. So this evening's questions are going to be based on last night's presentation. So some of the answers may be correct in other circumstances, but we want to get the exact word from the message last night, okay? All right, we got eight participants. I'm gonna go ahead and start the game. All right, nine participants, thank you. All right, let's start. Okay, first question. <laughs> You have 20 seconds to answer. What city in Brazil has a lot of trade and fun culture? What city, and it was said in the message last night, what city in Brazil has a lot of trade and fun culture? All right, seven seconds. Make your decisions. All right, so the answer was Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo was the answer. All right. So you can make sure you look up Sao Paulo, another city in Brazil. All right. First place, we got Ashley so far. 93072, second place. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Okay. God sends blank to cities. God sends blank to cities. Remember, you want the exact answer from the message last night. All of them can be correct, but I want the exact word from last night. God sends blank to cities. All right, two more seconds. All right, so we got four people got the right answer. The answer is messengers. God sends messengers to cities. All right. Next question. All right, scoreboard, we got first place still, Ashley. Well, Ashley, you should be first place considering what you presented last night, but that's fine. We got Gabby, that's second place, and then we got Norris, third place. All right, let's keep going. Next question. God shows compassion for cities, but what does he do for cities? Does he change them, flood them, burn them down, or transform? The exact word, you want to hear the word that's exactly from the message last night. Mm -hmm. Right? Answer. <laughs> the answer is transform. All right, majority got the correct answer. Great. All right, next one. All right, and Gabby, you're up first, first in the lead. Great job. Fourth question, where can you find the story of Saul's transformation? Acts 4, 1 through 7, Romans 6, 8 through 13, Acts 9, 1 through 6, or Romans 10, 21 to 25. Where can you find the story of Saul's transformation? Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a tie. 
But unfortunately, no one got the right answer. The answer is Acts 4, 1 through 7. So what is it wrong? <laughs> the answer is Acts 4. That's what I no, saying. no, I'm so I'm so sorry. You're correct. Sorry. I am reading it wrong. I am sorry. You're correct. The answer is Acts 9, 1 through 6. My apologies. Oh. My apologies. My apologies. I, I messed up messed up on that one. Sorry about that. All right, so. Ashley is taking up her first place position again. Talia, second place. And Gabby, third place. All right, fifth question. God wants to see changes and blank in the cities today. Abuse, repentance, love, or prayer? You want the exact word from the message last night. Five seconds. All right, majority got the right answer. Repentance is the answer. God wants to see changes and repentance in the cities today. Final question. All right, Ashley stays first place, Talia second, and Norris, you've got your third place position. All right, last question. True or false? As young people of God, it is not our duty to love our cities and expand the kingdom of God. As young people of God, it is not our duty to love our cities and expand the kingdom of God. True or false? Five seconds. All right. It's false. As young people of God, it is our duty to love our cities and expand the kingdom of God. So correct everyone on that one and we are finally done let's see who won first second and third place this evening third place all right uh, the norris third place second place talia and third place, place. drum roll please first place. ashley first place all right everyone thank you for joining us this evening for our game of cahoots be prepared to listen to the message this evening so you'll be prepared for tomorrow's questions have a good night, everyone, and off back to Talia. Hey, amen. I hope you guys had fun playing that game. I know I did. It is now time for our song of meditation, which will be by Lauren Diego called Rescue. One moment, coming up now. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear your SOS, your SOS I will send out an army to find you In the middle of the darkest night It's true, I will rescue you there is no distance That cannot be covered Over and over You're not defenseless Oh, I'll be your shelter I'll be your armor I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear your rest. 
This time, Sister Alicia will bring us our scripture reading, and after that, we will hear the word of God from Sister Regina Kimball. Alisa, Alisa, if you're there, we can't hear you. Hello? Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you now. Hold on one second. The scripture reading will be taken from Matthew 9, verse 35. Jesus went about all the cities, teaching in their synagogue, teaching teaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease on the way. Amen. Amen. This time we will have Sister Regina. Good night, everyone. Um, for today's topic, it's called Transforming Cities Following the Example of Jesus. So I'm going to pray so if everyone could bow their heads and close their eyes. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Please help me to preach this message and for it to touch people's hearts and let the Holy Spirit guide me through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So today I'm going to be taking you guys on a journey inspired by Jesus, exploring how we can carry out effective missionary works in cities. Let's imagine a bustling city is full of challenges similar to what Jesus had in his time. But before we dive into this exciting topic, I'm going to tell you guys a short story. A few years ago, in the heart of a great city lived a young man, David. Amidst the constant hustle and bustle of the city, David felt overwhelmed by the lack of hope and purpose he observed in the lives of many people around him. However, one day, David experienced an, an encounter that would change the course of his life forever. He crossed paths with an elderly man named Elijah, who shared with him the story of Jesus' ministries in the city. The elderly man took his Bible and read the Gospel of Matthew 9, 35. 
which says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. David paid attention as Elijah explained this verse, highlighted three important key actions that Jesus performed for the benefit of the cities, represented by the three main verbs. The first verb that I'll be talking about is teach. Jesus spent time in sharing his wisdom with the crowds in the cities. In Matthew 35, it says Jesus went through all the towns teaching in their synagogues. Um, however, his teaching wasn't limited to words. It was also reflected in the way he lived his life. His life conveyed lessons of love, compassion, justice, and faith. Now, let's continue with David's story. After his encounter with Elijah and his newfound um, p- passion for following in Jesus' footsteps, David felt compelled to do something truly significant. Instead of being swept away by the city's routine and superficial directions, he decided to take action. One afternoon, while strolling through the city park, David came across a group of young people discussing spirituality and religion. Intrigued, he approached and began to listen. These young people were eager to learn more about God and the Bible. David was impressed by their genuine intrigue and delving deeper into the word, sorry, into their faith. Motivated by these young people's desire to learn, David volunteered to be their mentor. He shared what he had learned and helped them navigate the challenges in the city of life through spiritual perspective. Additionally, he shared online resources on spiritual topics and recommended books on podcasts that had enriched his own spiritual understanding. Young City Missionaries. Take inspiration from what Jesus and from what Jesus did and from David's experience. It's time to take action and make a difference in your city. I'm going to share three tips on that. First tip is organize Bible study. Organized Bible study is where you gather friends or people you don't know who don't know you and organize Bible study groups in welcoming places like parks, um, libraries, cafes, etc. It's not just about reading the Bible, but exploring what it means in everyday life. Second tip is being mentors. Being a mentor for young people who need spiritual guidance. Help them navigate life's ups and downs, share experiences together, and grow faith together. Third and last final tip is sharing resources. Sharing resources is where you share books, podcasts, and online materials that have impacted you that and discuss God and salvation in a relative and engaging way for today's youth. Think about what you would like and share it enthusiastically. Remember that teaching is not just about imparting information. It's about being a role model for others. Show love, compassion, and faith in your daily life. And you'll see how your light shines in the city. Ready to make a mark in your community? This time is now, young folks. Second verb that I'm going to be saying is preach. Look at Jesus. He was truly a master at this. He only shared his wisdom, but also eagerly taught everyone the most exciting news in history. The kingdom of God was here, full of hope, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Do you remember our friend David, the one I was talking about earlier? The man who felt once lost in the city and searched for a purpose in life? After his encounter with Elijah and his new passion for following in Jesus' footsteps, David felt compelled to do something truly important. One day, while David was at his school, he had the perfect opportunity to put the verb preach into action. 
His teacher, who identified as an atheist, asked David why he believed in God. Right there and then, in front of all of his classmates, David spoke with courage and conviction about the reasons he had faith in God. He explained the wonder of creation and, by, and how the Bible had a transformative impact on his life. The group of students listened attentively to every word David said, and even the teacher was impressed by the firmness of his convictions. After speaking about for 10 minutes or so, David took a deep breath and shared the most amazing story of Jesus and how his faith in him has transformed his own life. He spoke of hope and forgiveness found in God and how reconciliation can change everything. He did it with bravery, but also with humility and love. He didn't try to impose his faith or anything, but shared the truth in an authentic and respectful way. David's passion and genuine love was shown through his actions and words. David's preaching brought hope to those young people who listened. Just like Jesus, David proclaimed the good news with courage and love. And in that moment, he made a difference in the city's schools. Our last verb that I'll be talking about is heal. Jesus didn't just teach and preach. He also healed the sick and confronted the afflicted. In the Gospel of Matthew 9.35, it tells us that he healed every disease and sickness among the people. But remember, it's not just about curing physical elements, alignment, sorry. It also refers to healing spiritual and emotional wounds. That's an essential part of our mission in the city. Let's return with David. After listening to the young people, he came to understand the importance of healing. One day, after delving into the study of the Bible, David felt in his heart that God was calling him not to only teach and preach, but to also serve in a more tangible way. David noticed that in his city, there were many homeless people in need of food and clothing. And there were also elderly individuals who rarely received any visitors. He decided to speak with his church pastor and express his desire to get involved in a service group. The pastor informed him about a group of church members who had a ministry of providing food to the homeless. David didn't hesitate for a moment and joined this group. Every Saturday after church service, he joined his fellow members in preparing 200 meals and then went out to distribute them on the city streets. This work filled David's heart with joy, and this is where he understood one of the ways we can fulfill the word heal. I remember that um, Coconut Grove, um, they did, what they would do was serve food out to the community. And I remember our dad telling us that we had to go. We went, I thought I wouldn't like it because we had to stand out in the sun and everything, and it was really hot outside. But when I was distributing the food to everybody, I actually felt really good about it. And I would like to do it again as well. Now, healing doesn't just mean treating the sick. It also means taking care of those in need. It's about providing food, clothing, assistance to the homeless, visiting sick people in the hospital, spending time with the elderly in the city nursing homes, visiting the widows, showing love to orphans. It's about doing what you can for those who are marginalized in your city. Like Jesus, David understood that healing goes beyond the physical. It's about touching hearts and alleviating the burdens of those who are afflicted. And so like all of us, David found a powerful way to fulfill the verb heal in the city. So young city missionaries, Let's follow Jesus and David's example. Look, let's look for opportunities to serve the needy. You can make a difference in a city through your actions filled with love and compassion. In closing, David, the young man in our story, I don't know if you guys remember that, but him, 
follow Jesus' examples in the city. He learned to teach, preach, and heal. And his missionary work transformed the lives of many people. Today, as young missionaries in the city, we have the same opportunity to be agents of change. Remember that following Jesus' examples involves teaching with wisdom, preaching with love, and healing with compassion. By doing so, we can be instruments of transformations in our city, bringing hope and God's love to those who need it most. Let this mission be a passionate and commitment. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Regina. At this time, we will now go into our breakout rooms where you guys will discuss two questions, which are, have you witnessed any significant changes in your city that you believe are a result of God's work? And if you could see God transform your city in one way, what would it be? Again, the questions are, have you witnessed any significant changes in your city that you believe are a result of God's work? And if you could see God transform your city in one way, what would it be? Okay, now that everyone's in, as we close tonight's meeting, I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining in tonight for our, our second day of Youth Week of Prayer. I hope that we were all able to learn something from the word Sister Regina gave. And just a reminder, if you guys could please share the link with your friends and family so that they can continue to support our youth. And we will see you guys back here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Thank you. 7.30, sorry. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I world full of trouble now. I thought, how do we ever get so far down? And how's it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven. I thought, God, why don't you do something? Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty and children sold into slavery. The thought disgusted me, so I shook my fist at heaven. I said, God, why don't you do something? He said, I did. something